this is Fit Liz Kitchen where it's Liz, that's me, getting fit, trying anyway, in the kitchen. Um, so today I have a new recipe for you. I have a cabbage and mushroom stir fry. Um, and you can see here I've served it with a sweet potato because I just love doing that. Um, and you can totally serve it with rice or whatever grain you like. Um, so yeah, this is a whole food, plant-based, no oil, salt or sugar stir fry. Um, so the name is a little bit funky, um, stir fry, but it's not fried. And this is definitely not the proper way to stir fry things, but this is just how I do it. And I've been doing it for a while and I really enjoy it this way and I hope you will too. So anyway, if you don't know me, I'm Liz and I've lost, uh, as of the time of filming this video, I've lost 113 pounds. 113.6, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> and uh, on, I've lost uh, 113 plus pounds on a whole food, plant-based, no oil diet. Um, I did cut out sugar near the beginning of my diet um, and recently I have cut out salt. Um, you'll see I do use miso in my recipes, uh, but I'll leave a link in the description below where you can read um, about how soy has a protective effect and allows us to eat miso without the sodium affecting us too much. Um, yeah, it just really helps me enjoy my food. I'm really excited to share with you this stir fry recipe today. I think you're going to love it. You can use any vegetables you want in it. I've used half of a head of Napa cabbage, and this is about half of the pot, so I'm having about a quarter of a head of large head of Napa cabbage. I typically pick cruciferous vegetables for my stir fries just because I want to get more of those in. I also have about two bunches of kale uh, stems. So when I make my salads, you'll see in my kale sweet potato salad recipe video up there, uh, I'll put a little tip in there, um, a link, and you'll see that I don't need the stems in my salad. I save the stems, I chop them up, and I put them in a stir fry like this, and it's a great way to get extra cruciferous vegetables and reduce food waste. Um, so yeah, I always, try to include a cruciferous vegetable in my stir fries. Today we have Napa cabbage. Often I will use turnip greens, kale, bok choy or baby bok choy, um, or um, Swiss chard, which is not a uh, cruciferous vegetable, but it is delicious and it is good for you to eat sometimes. Um, so uh, what I do with the leafier green vegetables like kale or the baby bok choy is I separate the leaves from the stems, and I chop the stems up and I cook the stems early. You'll see in the video when I add my kale stems, that's when I would add them. I add them first along with the onions. Um, and then I add the leaves toward the end of the cooking process. Today, since we have Napa cabbage, it all cooks about the same rate. I just add it after I've uh, cooked the mushrooms and then I cook it for about five minutes until it's tender enough to my liking. Uh, so yeah, um, the one other thing I wanna say <laughs> before we get into the recipe video is I really appreciate you all being here and watching my videos. Please leave a comment uh, letting me know what you think about this video, if you have any other video requests. I love chatting with you all. It's so much fun and I love the community on here. Um, please give this video a like if you like it um, and want to see more. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel out and I love um, putting videos out here for you all and I would love to continue doing that. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so I have heated my pan and I am going to add my onion first. So that's just kind of a medium onion that I diced. You can use shallot or any onion that you have. Of course, you don't have to use onion. And since I'm sauteing these, I'm just going to go ahead and add my next ingredient, kale stems that are from salads. Okay, so that's about two bunches of kale stems. I already ate the leaves in a salad, so I wanted to save the stems for this. So by adding them when we add the onion, they'll have a lot of time to uh, soften because they're very thick. I'm going to add a little splash of water so nothing sticks. I just added about a tablespoon. Okay, so everything is a lot softer now. Um, the onions are, you know, relatively translucent. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add my mushrooms. So 
So here I have about a pound of sliced shiitake mushrooms. You can use whatever mushrooms you have on hand. I've done this with white mushrooms or baby bella, like cremini mushrooms. I've done it with oyster mushrooms. There's a really cool pack of like mixed gourmet mushrooms that I sometimes buy from Costco. Uh, and that's really good in this. You can really use any type of mushrooms you want. Obviously, if you do not like mushrooms, don't add them. Add whatever you like. You can add other veggies like carrots, uh, snow peas, uh, broccoli, asparagus, peppers, you know, whatever you want. Now, I'm just gonna cook these until the mushrooms kind of cook down a bit. Okay, so as you can see, the mushrooms are a lot more cooked now. And it's really a matter of personal preference how much you cook them down. Shiitake mushrooms, I like to kind of cook them down a bit because otherwise they're a little bit spongy. Um, but other mushrooms such as baby bella or white mushrooms might cook down a lot faster. Now I'm just going to add some garlic. Normally I would use fresh minced garlic because I feel that it tastes better, but um, I was out today. <laughs> I'm gonna saute this for about a minute. You'll see there's a lot of liquid in the pan. That's from the mushrooms releasing some of their liquid. I never worry about it. It's always fine. I have <laughs> a lot, like a half of head of Napa cabbage. So a large head, half of a large head. Um, so I'm just gonna add it all right now. All right, so as you can see, I have a large amount of Napa cabbage in here. Um, <laughs> it's so much that it's too much to stir. Um, so right now I'm going to pop a lid on it and I'm going to cook for about five to seven minutes until the cabbage has reduced in volume by about half. Um, and how long you cook your cabbage or whatever green you're using is totally up to you. Um, you can use like bok choy or whatever. So the thicker the vegetable, whatever you're using, the longer it'll take to cook down. But I would try this after about five minutes. Um, you don't want to overcook it because then it gets kind of soggy. All right, I'm back. So let's check on our cabbage. As you can see, it has shrunken in volume, probably about a third, maybe, maybe a half. Math was never my strong suit, but at least I can stir now. So if my mushrooms were not really cooked enough before, they're probably cooked now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rather large piece of cabbage. Ouch, it's hot. I'm going to get a fork. <laughs> take a rather large piece of cabbage and see how my fork kind of easily goes through that. I think that means it's done, but I'm still going to try it. Oh yeah, that's done for me. Notice I, I'm gonna turn off my burner. Notice how I said that's done for me. It's all about what's individually good for you. So if you wanna cook this longer, you go ahead and cook it longer. This is definitely not your typical stir fry because it's not done with any oil. Um, it's quite a bit of liquid left at the bottom. I don't really care. Um, and it's probably, you know, too much volume for this small of a pot, but this is what works for me and I enjoy this, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna try one of these kale stems and make sure they're cooked. Yep. Nice little crunch. So, let's flavor it. I have a little sample size of California balsamic here. This is the ruby red onion. I really like the teriyaki one, but I'm out and I'm not buying any full sizes until they're sale because, you know, money. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of this. I have my homemade mushroom uh, seasoning blend. I could definitely include this in a video sometime if you want me to. So I don't really measure because I don't put any added salt in this. So I just kind of measure it with my heart and I just make more when I need to. What it's doing is it's actually flavoring that water at the bottom of the pot. And that's actually gonna become a sauce. And you can ditch that if you want to, or you can use it. So now I'm gonna serve it, and I'm just gonna put a bunch in my bowl. I usually eat about half the pot. If 
you don't want the sauce, you could strain this. But I'm totally okay with the sauce. I also cooked up some edamame that I'm going to add in. I don't add this to the pot because I like to be able to measure how much I'm eating. And then here I have a little thinned miso paste. This is going to add a little saltiness without adding actual salt. There is sodium in miso, but I'll put an uh, article in the description about the protective effects of soy with miso. So I just mixed that in, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just making a little room for my starch here. I baked up a sweet potato. Now most people would probably serve this with a grain, I'm going to cut this open, and you totally can. I often serve this with oat groats, you could serve it with rice, quinoa, whatever you like really, but I really like it with a sweet potato, and then I take a little bite of the sweet potato with the cabbage mixture and it's really delicious. So there you have it. Uh, here is our bowl of cabbage and shiitake stir fry with sweet potato. Uh, like I said, you can totally serve this with any grain you like um, or any starch you like. It'd be great over rice noodles or something like that. Or you could put the rice noodles in the dish. You can really do whatever you want with stir fry and that's why I love it. But this is just kind of a water saute and everything turns out totally delicious and whole food plant-based salt oil sugar free. Um, so yeah, I am going to try this for you. I hope I can do it with one hand. So I'm just going to take a bite of my sweet potato, take a bite, ooh, take a bite of my mushroom and my cabbage. Mm. The mushroom and cabbage mixture tastes like a savory, like almost a little salty from the miso. And the sweet potato is so gooey and sugary and sweet. It's a red sweet potato. I love those um, that I baked in the oven for about an hour. And it's so delicious. I just, I just love this combo. So yeah, this is one of my favorite lunches or dinners. It's going to be lunch right now because it's daytime. Um, and I have the leftovers for tomorrow. And I usually eat half the pot by myself, um, but when you think about it, I'm eating a quarter of a large Napa cabbage. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy it with this little bowl of sumo orange segments. Um, I love having fruit with every meal. It makes it feel like I have dessert. Um, and fruit is just so nourishing and beautiful and wonderful. And I'm going to go for a walk after this with the dog, and I'm going to go for a bike ride, so I need that fuel. <laughs> so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you give this recipe a try. Let me know what you want to see coming up for new videos. I'm still going to try and get you a what I eat in a day. It's just really hard to convince myself to clean the kitchen and film in the mornings. Um, so I have to figure out how to clean the kitchen at night and then film in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, um, like this video if you liked it, uh, comment if you want to, and uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I would really love it if you hit subscribe and get um, notified when in your subscriptions when we post a new video, and it would really help my channel out. So have a great day and take care. Bye.